Hi, welcome back to the X-Plane Scenery Development video series here on YouTube. Today we'll be going over object surface material attributes, or in layman terms, how to make stuff shiny. In the last couple of videos, we took our model, textured it, placed it into the X-Plane world, and gave it some night textures, but now we needed to spruce it up a little bit by making those glass panels reflective like they are in real life. If you recall in our last video, we actually took a peek and looked at what is in the object file, all the different text attributes, and there are plenty of attributes. I'll leave a link in the description to the file format specification for that. But some of the attributes we can add are shiny and hard and ground and transparent, and today we'll be focusing on the shiny attribute. Now, the shiny attribute works a bit different between X-Plane 10 and X-Plane 11 because of the lighting changes that they've added. In X-Plane 10, you could almost think of it as the reflectivity of a metal. So it's really only reflecting the sun. But in X-Plane 11, the shiny surfaces act more like glass and they reflect reflections of everything that is around them. Because of that, Nowadays, with X-Plane 11, you don't really want to give the shiny attribute to metal surfaces, but we certainly want to give it to glass surfaces, and we have plenty of those in this building. So let's jump in. The first thing we're going to do is go and select all of our glass faces. And now all we have to do is use the built-in surface attribute of the SketchUp to X-Plane plugin. So we'll right click, we'll go down to X-Plane, and we will select the Shiny option. After we're done, we simply save and go back and export our object for X-Plane. Let's jump into the sim real quick and see what that looks like. So here we are back in the sim, and as you can see, we have a reflection of the surrounding area on the glass, and that's exactly what we were looking for. So Fairly quickly, you can give your scenery objects just a little bit more of a lifelike feel. Really quick, let's jump back into SketchUp and talk about some of the other possible attributes. Alright, so again, we'll right click, we'll go down to the X-Plane option menu, and here's all the different options that we have. Now again, each of these is outlined in the X-Plane object file format specification, which I will link to down in the description, but I'll give you a quick overview. Now, hard, hard deck, and ground all sort of specify how these different faces interact with the world. When you drive an aircraft through the wall, does it crash the aircraft? Can you drive over this or taxi over this in an aircraft and things like that? The alpha is fairly self-explanatory. It's just telling x that there's some alpha or some transparency in this part of the model, so it needs to work a little bit harder to render that, and this is an efficient way of letting X-Plane know that you only need to spend the time processing the alpha channel on just this section. Of course, then we have the shiny, which we just went over, and additionally there's an animation panel, which we might get into in a future video. I hope this quick little tip helped you out. In our next video, we'll go over more complex texturing processes such as texturing curved surfaces and texturing a lot of surfaces all at one time using projected textures. Until then, thank you for watching. 